Hello everyone, I'm Earl Ellis, and I'm an ecologist more than a uh, geospatial analyst, although I do some geospatial analytics in my lab. Uh, one of the things I find most interesting these days uh, is how much people are focusing on the changes in the environment that people are creating without thinking of the human context within which those changes occur. And that's my main focus, is how do we do ecology in an anthropogenic biosphere? Uh, so work that I've done has looked at this human context for how humans transform ecology. Remember, it's not just destroying ecology. It's not just a footprint. It's a sustained interaction. We are living and changing uh, ecology across the Earth. And approximately three quarters, depends on how you calculate it, of the biosphere, the terrestrial biosphere, is now already transformed and in the process of being changed more by sustained human interactions with ecology. Uh, the geospatial work in this is actually pretty simple, but it does involve social data that is really not present in Google Earth Engine at present. And it's something I, that is very noticeable to me, uh, this idea that uh, we can do it all by looking down from space at the surface of the Earth, and we are going to understand why humans are transforming things. We might see the results, but we won't be able to answer the question why and what do we do about it. So the social context is incredibly important. So ecology, all the ecology that we're looking at pretty much is embedded within human landscapes, human systems, uh, and they're mosaics. And so you can look at crops, but those crops are within a larger landscape, a larger social context. You can look at deforestation. It's always occurring within a human context. It's not something that is just pixels of forest coming and going, it is a process of sustained interaction. Why are forests forming all over the world? That's also a process, much harder to look at. You can see them come and go, but it's very hard to understand why, or even the details of the ecology. It's very hard, at least at present, with current remote sensing technologies, especially uh, multispectral imaging, to look at, uh, for example, the changes in biodiversity that are occurring, right? And changes in biodiversity are a lot more than just species loss. That's a very simple process comparatively, but species gain, if you're actually managing a reserve somewhere, you're probably concerned about all the species that you're getting that you don't want. That's a sustained process as well that humans are creating. Uh, but basically this idea that we can just look at ecology of say a forest or a tree without considering the human landscape within which it's embedded will ultimately be unproductive. Uh, so we need to embed the pixel. And I was going to say, here's my, here's my tagline, okay Google, socialize the pixel. We have Earth Engine, we have pixels, we have the most amazing pixel engine I've ever seen. It is a remarkable Earth changing accomplishment, no question. But it's not going to go far enough unless it can integrate the social. And uh, just some simple examples, I, I threw that one in there, but the thing that I think is probably the biggest cause of global change on the planet today is not global warming, it is the market forces of humanity acting on the landscape across the world. You are not going to understand this just by looking down at pixels, even with video. You need to have uh, an understanding of things like roads and market influences, market data, needs to be brought into this kind of an environment to look at cause and effect, not just effect, of human-induced change. Thank you. Uh, how people are using uh, your concept? Uh, well, I've seen, actually one of the most remarkable things is I predicted just, you know, mostly resistance and actually there's been a great deal of adoption. And actually health was something I didn't really think much about, but it's used a lot in, in health analytics, looking at, for example, zoonotic disease uh, is, is often looked at within that human context. Uh, most recently, I just got an email about someone who's working on mangroves. And mangroves are rarely actually, it's rarely possible to preserve mangroves within a kind of a quote, natural preserve concept. Almost all of them are within working landscapes and active coastal environments. And so including that human context in uh, conservation, pr conservation outside protected areas is the essential to understanding the problem and solving it. The question was, is there a plan to have... Um, Anthrome, anthropogenic Anthrome. biomes. Anthromes, I love that people are using that. Uh, th the plan is I want to do it, um, and I'm trying to find a way. And it's actually not as simple as it, as it could be, it's, it seems. Maybe that's going to change with this new uh, MAPS engine replacement, but uh, so far it's hard actually to upload. You know, the other thing it's obviously missing is even climate model outputs. I mean, how, I mean, it's kind of amazing, but hopefully soon. <laughs>